So in section 5.3, our objectives will be, when we finish this section, to be able to solve polynomial equations either by factoring or by graphing. Okay? That's the goal of this section. For today, all we are going to do is learn a couple new types of factoring techniques, and then when you come back on Monday, we'll actually use those techniques to solve. Okay? The first factoring pattern that you're going to look at is called factor by grouping. One of the nice things about factor by grouping is it's a pattern that's used when you have four terms. We've had a lot of factoring patterns when we have binomials and trinomials. This is the only one you're going to learn with how to do something when you have four terms. Okay? The technique says to split them into two groups. So we are basically going to take our four terms and we're going to cut them in half. Then we look at the first half, those first two terms. Is there a GCF that we can pull out? What's common in these first two terms? The AX and the AY. An A. If we pull an A out, we would have the X plus Y piece left. Do you agree with that? Okay. Then we do the same thing on the second half. We look at those two terms, a BX and a BY. What's common? The B. So we pull out the B, we factor it out. What we have left over would be the X plus Y. Factor by grouping only works if that piece that's left over, that x plus y piece, matches the piece that's left over in the second one. If those two things don't match, either you pulled out the wrong GCF, all right, or you can't factor by grouping. If they do match, those two matching ones come down and make one of your factors, and the pieces that you pulled out, those GCF pieces, form the other factor. So the A plus the B would form this piece. Most common mistake is that students think because there are two of these X plus Ys, they think you need a two here, and you don't. We can think of this X plus Y piece as being a common factor, and I'm factoring that out front. Okay. Now, you can always FOIL it to check. So if we take A times X, we get that piece. If we take A times the Y, we get that piece. If we take B times X and B times Y, we get our other two pieces. So we don't need two of these X plus Ys. We just need one. It's a common factor. We're going to factor it out. What would be left then would be the A plus B. Okay. So that's factor by grouping. Once in a while, you might have four terms that you maybe have to rearrange a little bit to find something that's common that can be pulled out. But at this level of math, most of the time, you're given them in, a, in an okay order. All right? But if you look at the first two terms and say, well, there's nothing common, see if you can rearrange them. All right, so do I have a, a GCF for those first two terms? What would it be? 4x squared. All right. What is the leftover pieces if I factor out a 4x squared? A 2x and a negative 5. Okay. So 2x minus 5. Now I do the same exact thing with the second two pieces. What's common in a 6x and a 15? Negative 15. What is it? A 3? If I pull a 3 out, what's left? 2x minus 5. Does grouping work? Is the what's left piece match? Yes. In both cases, we had a 2x minus 5 left. So that is going to come down as one of my factors. And the pieces that I pulled out front are going to form the other factor. So I have a 4x squared and a positive 3. And again, how could we check that? We could FOIL it back out. Okay? Our second example. 
What is common in the first one, the first half of that? Okay, if we factor out a 5m squared, what is left over? Agree, disagree? Agree, okay. Looking at our second half, 8m minus 16, what could we factor out? An 8? Are we factoring out a positive or a negative 8? Positive 8? So I'm going to make that a plus 8 there. And do we have an m minus 2 left? Okay, so the common piece, the m minus 2 comes down to make one of our factors. And the other factor is made up of what? The 5m squared plus the 8? Okay. Looking at our next one. We have some bigger numbers here. Is there a GCF of the whole thing? Because remember, we talked, every time we talk about factoring, we say if there's a GCF, you should pull it out, right? Could we take something out of all four of those terms right away? What would we take out? A 3? All right, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to pull a 3 out. I'm going to use a bracket for this outer parenthesis just because we have some stuff to deal with inside here, but we do want that 3 to, to remain on the outside. What is left if I just factor out the 3? 2n cubed. Okay. Okay. Now, we still have four terms, right? Can we use grouping on those four terms? The 3 is just going to hang out in front here. Okay. So now if we split it, what's common in the first two? 2n squared, what would be left? n plus 4, okay. And in the second half, what's common? Positive or negative? Positive 7, what's left? Okay. Now, the 3 out front... My two factors from those four terms, I'm going to have a 2n squared plus 7. And then the common one of n plus 4. That is completely factored. Okay? That is your best answer. I'm going to go through this one again. You don't have to write this down. I just want you to watch. If we hadn't pulled out the 3 first, okay, we had 6n cubed plus 24n squared plus 21n plus 84. Could I still do a grouping technique? What would I take out of the first two? And what would be left would be the n plus 4. And over on this one, I could pull out 21, okay? That gets me 6n squared plus 21 and an n plus 4 as my two factors. The problem is that's not done. There is a GCF in this first factor. It would still need to get pulled out. You can pull it out at this point, and we'll end up with the same answer we had earlier. But the problem is most students don't think to pull it out then. Okay. So look at your four terms. If they do have a common factor, go ahead and get it pulled out first. It's just going to give you smaller numbers to work with and make the rest of your factoring easier. Okay? All right, what is different about the fourth one here? There's more variables. There's still just four terms, right? But there's a lot of different variables. When we split this, is there something common in those first two? And there's other ways I could rearrange these four terms and still have common things I could pull out. But do I have something common that I could pull out? Yes. What is it? A 2 and an x? 
Okay, so let's factor a 2x out. What pieces are left? If we factor a 2 out, we would have 3w minus 7z squared. Okay, what's common in the second half of that? I heard a y, what else? 5y? If I pull out a 5y, do I have 3w minus 7z squared left? Yes? Okay, so the grouping pattern's working. One of my factors would be 3w minus 7z squared. The other one would be what? 2x plus 5y? All right, questions on factoring by grouping? Anybody? Okay, so step one, check to see if there's just an overall GCF that could be pulled out. Step two, cut it in half and factor GCFs out of each half. Okay? Our other technique is for sum and differences of cubes. We have a factoring pattern for, for difference of squares. Okay, if I gave you a difference of squares, I think you all would be able to factor it. This is a new pattern, and we're dealing with cubes. Most of you know your perfect squares pretty well. You probably don't know your perfect cubes very well. So what I'd like to do, I'm going to pause the video. I just, in the margin or somewhere in your notes, I want you to list the first 10 cubes. So one cube, two cube, three cube, four cube, okay? Okay, let's fill in our perfect cubes. One cubed is one, two cubed is eight, three cubed is, okay, four cubed, five cubed, six cubed, seven cubed, eight cubed, nine cubed, and 10 cubed. Yes? So, when I ask you, is something a perfect cube, it's going to help if you know those. All right? If they kind of jump out at you as being cubes. So, we have two patterns. We have a sum of cubes, we have a difference of cubes. However, if you memorize the one, you should be able to create the other one. Okay? Do you see some similarities in the sum and the difference one? First row versus second row. Are there some similarities? Both of them have an A and a B in their first factor. And in their second factor, I see A squareds, I see ABs, and I see B squareds. Yes? So very similar terms. Signs are a little bit different. And what I want you to focus on is whatever sign you have here, that's what you're going to start with. Okay? So if you're given a sum of cubes, your first factor will have a plus sign in it. Okay? The next sign is opposite to what we started with. Our last sign is always going to be positive. Anytime you square a number, you're going to come out with a positive answer. So b squared is always going to come out positive. Now, look at the second row. We started out with a negative. Does my first factor have a negative in it? Yes. Is my next sign the opposite of that? Okay. And is my last sign always positive? So again, don't get bogged down trying to memorize both. If you know one and you know the pattern of it, your other one's going to be the same. Okay. The other thing to notice, we are starting out with two cubes, two perfect cubes. When I look at my first factor here, my numbers are just the roots, the cube roots of what I was given. So I went from an A cubed here to just an A. All right, that's the cube root of what I was given. I went from a B cubed to just a B. Okay? I've given you the proof of why it works. In case you don't believe me, you can look through that. We're going to go ahead and try a couple. Are my two pieces perfect cubes? Is x cubed a cube? 
Yes. Is 125 on my list of perfect cubes? Yes. What are their roots? In other words, if I cube rooted each of these, what would I get? Good. That's the first factor. Okay? Simply taking those roots. The second factor is built from that one. It is a trinomial. We take the first number here, an x, and we square it. We multiply them together. x times 5 would be 5x. We need the opposite sign from what we started with. And then we square the 5. And that's all you can do to factor a sum of cubes. That trinomial doesn't factor any further. Okay? So this is a pattern that you're going to have to memorize. Is 8 m cubed a perfect cube? Yes. What would its root be? Two. It's cube root. I heard 2m. Are we agreeing with that? Yes? Okay. Is 343 a perfect cube? Its root is 7. I have a plus sign, so I'm going to start with a plus. Now I have to go through my pattern. I'm going to build it from the 2m and the 7. The 2m gets squared. What happens when you take 2m times 2m? 4m squared. Good. Then we multiply them together. What's 2m times 7? 14m. And I need the opposite sign from what I started with. So I need a negative. And then I square the 7. Squaring a 7 gets me 49. Okay. Our next two are differences of cubes, but again, it follows that same pattern. We're starting out with two cubes. What's the root of the first one? An n. What's the cube root of 216? 6. We had a minus, so it's a negative 6. Right? Technically, the cube root of negative 216 would be negative 6. Now we build it. All right? It's a trinomial. The first term is n getting squared. My second term is the product of the two. I'm multiplying them together. What do I get if I multiply them? Okay, and I change the sign, so now it's positive 6n. And then if I square the negative 6, I get a positive 36. All right, I'm going to pause the recording. I want you guys to try that last one. What did you put down for the roots? 3x minus 4. Are we agreeing on that? Okay. Here's where I see a lot of mistakes. We take 3x and square it. That's not just squaring the x. It's squaring the 3 and the x. So 3x times 3x is 9x squared. Okay. Then we do the product. 3x times a negative 4 would be negative 12x. But we change the sign. We make it a positive 12x. Then we square the negative 4, which turns into a positive 16. Okay? So today's homework is that worksheet I just passed out. You have two factoring patterns, grouping and then the cube piece. You need to know those well so that we can go and actually solve using factoring next week.